Hey everyone, this is Patrick Shaka, Editor-in-Chief of Yachting Magazine, and I am here today with Hans Lowe, Deputy Director of CL Yachts in Hong Kong, and also Joseph Farakas from Farakas Design in Milan. And today we're here to talk to you about a brand new brand and a brand new boat, the CLX-96 from CL Yachts. How you doing, Hans? How you doing, Joseph? Good to see you. Hey, Patrick. How you doing? Yeah, good to see you all. I know we're, we're talking across multiple time zones here. Uh, so this is uh, it's very cool. Technology is bringing us all together. So Hans, you know, to you, um, for those who may not know, who is CL Yachts? CL Yachts is a brand that we developed not just to represent the luxury side of our business, but also to represent our authenticity. We wanted something that would represent our exceptional craftsmanship, our purity in design, and of course, our spirit of innovation. You know, we're building boats for people who value exploration and the journey of life. So with all that in mind, we reached out to Joseph who helped us develop uh, this new brand. And as someone who's never been involved in yacht design, he was specifically chosen for his outsider's perspective as someone who would be able to offer fresh eyes on our industry. Throughout this whole time that we were developing the brand, we were also developing CLX-96. And this really is a boat that pushes the envelope of conventional boat building and elevates it to new realms. So Joseph, as Hans was saying, uh, you know, having this, this background in, in, build, in shipbuilding and rugged ocean going uh, vessels, how does the heritage of the yards uh, commercial kind of, you know, commercial background tie into creating a yacht uh, series that has a very modern look today, but then also points to where the CL Yachts brand is going to be going in the future? You know, the opportunity to reimagine an entire brand much less an entire boat in a holistic way is really rare, especially for someone like myself who is uh, coming from outside the industry. I've worked in a lot of different areas and this was really any designer's dream is to uh, rethink yachting experiences and also yacht design. So as I learned afterwards, as Hans was saying, is that the parent company was going through this period of reconsideration the idea to very bravely and boldly reach out the in, reach outside of the industry was very unusual, but I think also ultimately a very enlightened one. Um, so really we started with not just understanding a lot of things about the history and heritage of the company so that we could integrate that in a very authentic way, but also trying to project and understand what do users want and what do very experienced yachts people, people who really love to sail, love to explore really, what do they want and what they're looking for in their yachting and in, in the future of yachting. Okay, everyone. And so without further ado, the CL Yachts, CLX 96. What is very striking about this boat, the first time that you look at this very new, very radical in some respects design, is, is of course this bold profile, the double reverse angle of the house, the very proud plum bow with a very sporty angle as it goes into uh, the waterline. But this flybridge with this extended wing, as we called it, these are the kind of recognizable factors that are there not just to give a new icon or a new appearance, but is really following a very holistic philosophy of giving more space, but also more distinct diverse spaces throughout the boat. So the space forward of the sky bridge uh, pilot house, for example, which we're calling Terrazzo de Portuguese, this is an expansive space forward of the pilot house, which is really unusual in a yacht in any size, in any class, which is just one example of how we're offering not just more space, but also more distinct spaces throughout the boat. There's also this idea of bringing the outdoors in with expansive light, convertible, open and closable doors and windows, and even on the lower deck, which has very large windows for the full beam staterooms, there's this idea of always being connected to the outside. 
One of the things that strikes me about this this boat is is one of the things you referred to earlier, which is this this kind of main deck superstructure with this kind of reversed angle. It almost looks like an inverted trapezoid. <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that is a lot of glass, you know, which I guess is part of the, you know, connecting the inside outside, creating a lot of sense of internal volume. Um, and it's really a fascinating to me, one of the most striking features of the yacht, and Hans or Joseph can answer this question, whoever, uh, but how, do, how does it go from idea to actually be able to create the physical structure that is going to be, the, you know, the superstructure of the yacht that is then going to go into the ocean and operate? It's one thing to make it look really cool. It's another thing to actually make it so it functions. Taking into consideration a lot of complex factors all at once, and I try to bring it all together in a very holistic way. The reverse house or this trapezoidal form, as, as you were saying, First of all, the heritage of the shipyard that has a proud history of creating work boats. And the reverse angle windshield is a kind of a symbol or, or you know, a strong functional element of classical work boats. But then we're combining it in a way that gives a very sleek, sporty overall appearance, especially with this iconic wing shape that tops it all off. And it has a lot of added function, uh, functional benefits. And that, plus the fact that we have this convertible sky lounge that transforms from fully weather tight to fully open, we're able to put a single helm up in the pilot house and liberate space down below. Also, it, it's kind of logical that if you have a conventional sloped house, the, the forward, you know, two or three meters, you're basically losing it to, to the styling line, let's say, of the windshield. By taking the same footprint of the house and, extend, and reversing it, we're giving that much more space, usable space, to the guests, plus the fact that you're actually removing the second helm, mm -hmm. opening up more space. So I would dare say that, that all the choices, even the most things that people might think are iconic design, form, if not styling choices, everything has at least two or three reasons to exist it's all that kind of thinking tied together in in a kind of a new vision uh, an overall design that has to hold together in a very holistic way so you you had mentioned that you have all these very um specific zones created on board to enjoy in multiple different ways what is what are some of those what are some of those zones and, and how what is their function how do they function yeah I, I would say there's three of the most striking unique zones on this boat um, the aforementioned zone immediately in front of the pilot house on the flybridge, which we're calling Terraza Portuguese, which is a nod and a wink to the classical Portuguese balcony on, on classical fishing boats. But we've taken that balcony and extended it into a terrace type element, hence the name Terraza Portuguese. So that is a completely new typology of space, let's say. Then, of course, in the forward main deck, it's very typical to have forward sun lounges. Because of the unique teardrop shape of the hole, if you're looking at it from above, the maximum beam is just at the forward point of the house. So the forward sun lounge is actually starts off being one of the widest points of the boat, which is more than 23 feet full beam. So it's, it's a very large space, and we've got this circular arrangement. On one configuration, it's flat, expansive, adjustable sunbeds. And then the whole thing converts into this cocktail lounge where people are sitting in the round, able to enjoy each other's company, much like sitting in a small piazza or, or you know, courtyard, where there's a social dynamic created through, through the circular arrangement. The third one is the expansive transom or beach club which has a, which has a, a convertible a Z lift platform for managing the tenders, but also uh, any type of water toys or a beach platform that lowers into the water for safe and easy access to the water. And are we storing those water toys and tenders just yeah. inside the, the transom garage? Is that where they're going? The, the, there is a storage space uh, just on the transom for mm -hmm. smaller types of toys. But things like the tender and the jet ski would be stored mm -hmm. on the, the transom area itself and managed with mm -hmm. the zero. Johan, you had mentioned earlier about, you know, um, for people to, you know, explore with their families and crews. So 
from an accommodation standpoint, what, what are we looking at in terms of accommodations on the CLX 96 for both uh, owner, guest, and also crew? Uh, so we have four staterooms on board. The master stateroom is located at the bow and uh, the VIP is also going to be full beam as well. So they're very big staterooms, uh, plenty of accommodation for, for everybody. All the bathrooms on this boat are going to be en suite and we have uh, generous crew quarters as well. How many crew can you carry on the boat? There's two cabins for crew. Uh, mm-hmm. One is double and the other is two bunks. So Joseph, Hans, Hans had mentioned about the accommodations spaces on this boat, and he also mentioned about the, the VIP also being full beam. But with the master, uh, we had been talking, and you said this is more of a master suite than a master stateroom. So could you just give us a little bit of information about how this master stateroom is laid out? Yeah, well, the master stateroom, I think, is a very special space. Not only does it have its own entrance foyer, but again, because of the teardrop shape of the hull, it's located at the widest part of of the ship, even though it's far forward in its own special area, which affords privacy. And then upon entrance, you see the full beam, expansive space, huge side to side windows. Looking forward, the forward bulkhead is completely transparent with with frosted glass windows. On the other side is a very large ensuite head with his and her WC, his and her sinks, and a central shower, walk-in closets. And the whole thing comes together in this luminous, well-lit space that is really just, uh, it has to be seen to be believed, I think. I think we all look forward to seeing it. We've talked a lot about the the multiple alfresco kind of zones that are that exist, but also internally, you, you had talked about bringing the outside inside and having this kind of seamless flow. So how does that translate inside the CLX 96? Well, I think one of the striking things when somebody boards from the aft cockpit walking forward into the salon lounge is the continuity of the teak decking that goes from outside to the teak and holly treatment of the floors. But then one looking up and looking forward and around will be struck with the huge uh, port lights that allow 360 degree views, not just side to side, but from aft all the way forward to the, to the forward view out the house. And then a little bit farther, midway of the salon, you'll see the formal dining area is complemented on the starboard side with, which, with large, generous, trifold opening doors that transforms the formal dining experience into an alfresco possibility with optional trifold doors on the port side as well. Um, to complement the, the alfresco dining area on the flybridge. I know that we haven't actually done any sort of sea trawling with the boat yet, but what, what, are we, what is the, the power in the boat and what is the projected performance of the boat? So for engines, we're going to be using uh, two Caterpillar C32s, 1900 horsepower. Right. We figure right now the top speed should be 27 knots and if everything goes according to our calculations, the cruise will be 22 knots at, uh, at about 2,000 RPM. It's pretty impressive performance. for, uh, and, and, and as they're seeing the boat here today, it's, 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 a, it's a very shippy-looking, rugged, you know, ocean-going boat. And that's some, that's some pretty solid performance when you take a look at how much yacht we're talking about pushing through water. Where are we at in terms of the build, in terms of projected launch dates and seeing this boat for the first time? The boat's coming along nicely. Everything's going according to plan and... Uh, Right now, we should be launching in uh, the first quarter of 2021. Mm-hmm. And um, we, we plan to have this boat in the U.S. for its official debut, uh, FLIBS 2021. If you're going to be at FLIBS 2020, you can stop by the CL Yachts booth and get a virtual tour of the CLX 96 and go even deeper than we've gone here today. And when you're ready to see her in person, the CLX 96 will be debuting in FLIBS 2021. So, Joseph Hans, thank you very much for being with me today and giving all of us a look at the CLX-96. Uh, Again, we hope you enjoyed the tour here today and for the first look. And as Hans said, boat is being worked on now, and we're going to see it stateside at FLIBS 2021. So stay tuned for more on CL Yachts and the CLX-96. Thank you both very much. Appreciate your time.